Welcome back to the case studies. I'm here with Jan Roos, legal marketing expert, and we're going to be looking at how he can change his money thermostat in his business and break through a ceiling he's had of only making $15,000 a month in it. No matter what he does, he just cannot break through that ceiling. Self-sabotage comes up and he drops back down. Um, very clever of your subconscious mind there, Jan. <laughs> and we all, many of us have. Yeah, many of us have the same thing. Uh, but before we get to that, we're going to look at how he's combined using what would it take with his getting things done weekly review and also how he cues off a bad business mood to do TLC to the Light Connect to clear it out instantly. And also, you know, he's also looking at adding TLC to his morning routine. We'll look at that a bit. And the other thing Jan's been doing from the book is cord cutting the energy vampires in his life and business. And he's going to tell us about the exciting results he's had with that. So welcome, Jan. Thanks, Michael. So tell us, let's just start off with the, you said you combined what would it take with your getting things done review? And I know, I know a lot of entrepreneurs use getting things done as their way to get their tasks organized. How, how did you do that? Yeah, so I've actually been, uh, I've been following you on, on the Dynamite Circle or the forum that we're both a member of for, for quite some time. And uh, I've always saw you come up with these very insightful what would it takes questions. So um, the way that I've been working into my, uh, I have a weekly review that I do with getting things done, which should be pretty familiar to anyone who's using it. But um, after I do all my analysis and I go through all my actions for the past week and kind of see what the 80-20 is, um, I like to uh, use what would it take to kind of allow my subconscious to have suggestions for what's, uh, you know, what, what would it take to solve the problems that I have. So usually uh, I'm doing my review and I, I kind of leave that to the end after I've really parsed everything. Um, I just kind of sit on it for a while. And I, like to, uh, I like to do this on a Sunday afternoon when I have some time. And I've gotten some pretty good insights, which, uh, you know, actually has, has, has gotten me to the position uh, which I'm sure we'll get into this. Uh, some of the insights that allowed me to um, get myself out of my current situation, which is uh, below, below the urban stat. But uh, yeah, a good, a good part of that was, was due to what it would take and questions I was asking myself. And what's an example of one of these what would it takes that gave you new actions to do? So um, actually not too long ago, uh, this was kind of coincided with my tax bill, uh, I had an opportunity to get into the affiliate marketing world, which is science. Uh, but I really didn't want to because there's a lot of unscrupulous business practices that I wanted to avoid being involved with in any way. So the question that I was dealing with, uh, and this was, uh, it was posed to me by uh, a member of my mastermind, but something that I did a lot of meditation on myself was, what would it take to get the results that you would expect from doing affiliate marketing without having to change anything in your current business model? So could you make that kind of money based on what you're already doing for clients today? Because it's, you know, a lot of the time I kind of, uh, I'm a victim of shiny object syndrome a lot of times. And, um, you know, I probably saved myself a lot of pain and suffering from, uh, you know, not going, uh, starting from zero again and really just uh, bolting something onto what was already working. Wow. That, that sounds really cool thing. So basically you're getting things done in review. You're listing out all of the tasks and open loops you have in your business and then when you see a problem, you're using what would it take to solve it? But you're not just asking to solve it with what would it take. You're, you're asking to solve it in a particular way. Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's, it's, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes it's more open-ended because I, I want, I, I, I kind of have uh, you know, a couple questions that lead to the question, the main question that I'm going to ask. I mean, I'm a big, um, you know, one thing sort of guy. So if I think, you know, what's, what's the big problem that's stopping me from getting where I want in my business? That's usually what I, what I meditate on for what would it take. Love it. So let's move on. You, you've been using the TLC to the light connect. Uh, tell, tell the folks listening how you're using that. Yeah. So at this time, uh, I mean, I, I've, uh, I read Intuitive Business Mastery about, uh, like about a few months ago. I, was, I think I, I started it, uh, I finished it, yeah, just about a month ago. So uh, I started working the TLC technique, and when I was having these, these bad moods, um, I don't really get too angry. Uh, when my mind spins off, it's usually to a place of um, frustration and flash or anxiety. So the first time I ended up using it, I was, I was just super anxious. I was, uh, I was on a, a, a trip back home and all, uh, I, all I could really do was meditate. I was just kind of like really beside myself. 
Um, and that was the first time I used TLC. And um, it really ha helped me get out of that negative headspace, which would have just made for an absolutely miserable uh, overland travel. So uh, after I did that, I was, I was a totally a believer. So when I've gotten into situations where I'm um, like, it's mostly reactive at this point, but um, when, when things put me off, uh, off balance and I need to, I mean, I don't have time to, to not be or just, you know, give up the rest of the day to being in a bad mood. So I, I used TLC at that time. Uh, just center myself. You know, sometimes it only takes thirty seconds or, or a minute, but um, it, you know, I'm, I'm always left in a better mood afterwards. That's great. And then you 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 mentioned to me earlier before we started recording the case study, you you were thinking now of expanding your use of TLC proactively. Tell us a bit more about that. What you want to do there? Right. So I've been uh, I've been I've had a meditation practice for for quite some time. Um, I have experimented with visualization and I've kind of gone back and forth. Currently I'm not, but I think, um, you know, based on the results that I've gotten from using it reactively, I definitely think it's something I want to incorporate into my daily meditation practice. And I'm excited to see where, where, where things go with the results of that. So the idea there would be you'd proactively head off bad business moods that zap your productivity before they even happened. Yeah, that's what I hope for. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> so what would it take to have, have this morning TLC practice where you spend 30 seconds or a minute TLCing? You know what? I think what it would take would be for me to get it on my coach.me uh, to-do list, which I can do. I'll, I'll do it sometime later, but um, I, I can do it tomorrow. There's nothing stopping me. Cool. And that is wonderful. And you can do TL. I mean, it's great to do TLC as part of a meditation practice where it's real quiet. But for people watching, you know, if you have a, uh, you're driving every day or you take a shower or, you know, there are many places you could put TLC into your life and just have it become a habit. So, um, and I love how you're doing it. You know, when you're having, when you notice you're having a bad mood, or you're feeling low energy, you just do it anyway. Yeah. So. Well, that's the thing. It's uh, a lot of my, uh, my, my, med my meditation practice actually came from being in a negative space. I was just, I mean, I started, I started a lot of the good habits I have have been as a result of being in low places, which is hopefully something we can work on. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So you mentioned you've been doing cord cutting with the energy vampires in your life and business. Um, tell us your experience with that. Right. So one of my tendencies, uh, I have a really bad habit of ruminating on uh, just different relationships in my life. Some of them are business, some of them are personal, um, but it's usually right before I go to bed. So it's, uh, I'm just, usually I'm lying in bed. Uh, if I'm not, you know, if I'm not totally exhausted from the day, sometimes my mind will just, you know, get caught up in these, these loops where it's, you know, um, I, I start thinking about things and, you know, there's just a million and one ways your imagination can, you know, just take a situation that might not be optimal. I mean, sometimes I'm, you know, imagining, conversations that will never happen sometimes I'm imagining things I could have said in conversations that did happen uh and there's really no end to you know how much sleep I can lose from doing it so uh, ever <laughs> since you know so I've been no I've been starting to do the cord cutting when I do that and um it's really helped me get back to sleep it's it's uh it's it's I'm saving sleep from doing that and the other thing I've been doing is you know I am doing a fair amount of sales uh so sometimes uh you know if I have a block of five or six calls in an afternoon and I have one that's just really rotten for one reason or another, I'll, I'll always cord cut then so I don't take that negative energy into my next interaction. I love that. And does that help you have a better sales call for the next call or? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, like uh, it's, it's, it's very subtle, but uh, like I, I notice when I'm, when I'm off for whatever reason, it, it, uh, it ends up manifesting in different ways. It's, it's kind of like when I, I need to be a hundred percent, if I'm, if I'm on a hundred percent, I you know I can see around corners. I can, you know, I can come up with the injection handling when it happens, but it's like, you know, if, I, if I'm off even a little bit, uh, you just find more problems start to show up and you're less able to deal with them. So I like to minimize mm -hmm. that wherever possible. I, I love that application of cord cutting um, to improve your sales calls. That, that's a great tip. And that puts money straight into your pocket. So. Yeah, it's straight um, ROI. <laughs> yeah. And then you, what have you noticed? You know, how many energy vampires do you feel you had in your life before you started a regular cord cutting practice? Well, it's, it's kind of challenging. So for the thing is, you know, I've had a, I have a lot of flexibility in 
who I've allowed into my life for a while. Um, and a lot of the times it's, it's less that I have people that I would describe as overt energy vampires. And it's, it's kind of more, um, what I've been, um, what I've been kind of layering on to the relationship itself. So it's, it's, um, that being said, it's like with the sales, with the sales calls, I can tell there's some people that are like that. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of just in and out showing up and never getting it. Um, but mostly like, you know, the, the, my friends, families and personal relationships, I've, uh, it's, it's been more about taking out negative elements of the relationship than um, severing the relationship entirely. But that's the thing. I mean, in the book, you, you mentioned, you know, there's, you know, if, if you're visualizing uh, golden threads and, and less, you know, the, the negative threads, you, I, I'm usually visualizing and cutting part of those negative threads, not the entire thing. Yeah, you keep the love connections you have with friends and family and you cut any energy drains that you have with them. Yeah, and yeah. You, he you heal where that attached to you. You know, how did you allow that energy drain to continue uh, running for years or months or however long it's been going? And if you feel like it, you could heal it on their end too. So they don't, you know, have that pattern where they attach to you uh, again either. That's very so, interesting. I never thought of that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's good to just cut them. Right. But if you, mm. if you only cut them, they have a tendency to reattach. Right. If you haven't, yeah. if it's like, you've got a hole in your body, that's like a, an open energy wound that just mm. attracts their kind of energy cord to come and hook into it. It's like an electric socket, you might think. And right. if you heal it, you're removing that energy socket from your body. So people can't plug into you and suck your energy through it. Mm. So, you know, an example of that might be maybe you have, you know, someone might have bad boundaries uh, around lending money to people maybe or, or, or saying, unable to say no when someone asks them for help, even if it's not appropriate for them. So if you heal that wound, you know, you just won't, you won't be affected if, if people come to you with those particular energy drains. Yeah. And, and what I find is you, I just attract them less. Yeah. You know, if, if I don't have that way for people to hook into me, they kind of subconsciously pick up on that and they don't even try to drain my energy that way. Or, or another common energy drain is complaining. You know, if, mm -hmm. if I have a kind of, you know, I listen to complainers and encourage them to complain and gossip with them, that's a socket I have in my energy system to accept that kind of energy drain. And if I, if I don't have that in my energy system, you know, if I'm not into listening to complainers, you know, I'm just not going to attract them into my life. Yeah. Or if one turns it. up, they're not going to be able to hook in. Mm -hmm. I'm going to certainly have to work on that. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, great stuff. I am so glad you read the book and that you're getting uh, positive ROI from playing with the tools. So, um, mm. congratulations on that. So let, let's get to the main feature of this case study, which is, uh, we're going to shift your money thermostat and let's just explain that concept to folks who haven't, uh, come across it before. So just like with a house thermostat where you might set a minimum temperature of, you know, 60 degrees and maximum of 80. And if it's cold that day, you know, and it's going below 60, the heat, the thermostat tells the heater to turn on on and pump up the temperature. And if it's getting too hot, and it's going above 80 degrees, it turns on the air conditioner and cools it down. So that would be a regular thermostat. Now, the thing is, we in our businesses, we have a money thermostat. And in your case, it sounds like your upper limit has been $15,000. And when your business is really doing well, and it looks like you're going to break through that $15,000 barrier, you somehow pull a rabbit out of a hat and come up with, with some self-sabotage and, and bring the income back down again, either by losing some customers or creating extra expenses or doing something else interesting in your reality to make sure you don't get above that level of comfort. So this is self-sabotage. You know, it's at a subconscious level and it's not like you're consciously planning this, right? Thermostats yeah, no, are kind no. of automatic. And then at the lower level, in your case, you said you had, a, you think your lower level is about $5,000 a month of income. If your income goes below that, you suddenly like start to hustle and turn up the heat and like 
get creative and use what would it take and just call in old debts and call all your old customers, try and hustle up business and do clever new marketing methods and, and get the income back up because you're uncomfortable going below that level. Mm -hmm. And it's very common that businesses bounce around between those two levels of the thermostat and it, it can get frustrating after a while. Yeah. Tell um, me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, yeah, tell us it, about, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, to, to that, um, to riff on that a little bit, it's, it's funny because it's like I, I've had income goals. Uh, I don't think fundamentally too much has changed in the process I've been using to acquire clients since I started the business two years ago. And I remember by the end of that first year, I had a, quarter, I had a, a, a monthly recurring revenue goal of, of $20,000 that I was looking to hit by the end of the year. And it was a goal that I kept putting for myself every quarter um, in 2016 and now it's 2017. And the thing is, you know, a lot has happened. I've, you know, I've, we've, we've moved through a lot of iterations of the business, but, um, it's, it's frustrating because I feel on some level, it's, it's as if I haven't really had anything to show for, uh, the past two years of being in this business. Uh, I mean, obviously a lot has happened, but on some level it's like, you know, I haven't really broken through progress from an income perspective. Yeah. And, and this can go on for years, you know? Mm -hmm. So we, you mentioned earlier, you, you'd been working, you know, your business was doing good and then some unexpected problems. I say unexpected because, you know, yeah. the subconscious kind of helped create them. Um, so, you know, what, what happened? You, you help lawyers generate leads. What, what happened that zapped your income down? Right. So I got to the point. So this is, this is when I was coasting on the high end of the thermostat. So I had a, I had a really big rush at the beginning of uh, summer of 2016. So I, I had a, a lot of stuff that I was doing. I was doing the right things to get to the point where I could break through, including hiring an account manager, which is a big move for me because I was going basically from a consultant to you know, more of a company with a, you know, with defined service delivering. So I was putting a ton of work that summer. I was hustling up some good clients. I was probably getting up to, you know, uh, I, think, I think my best month that summer was right around the 15K mark. And then I had this, um, well, it was actually the, the, the Dynamite Circle Bangkok event. So I had been preparing for uh, being absent for that month. But uh, going through and having all that freedom was, was actually uh, pretty intoxicating. And I, I do mean that in some, some ways, literally, because I was doing a lot of, uh, a lot of drinking. Uh, I was, you know, that was, that was partying a lot. I, I was getting work done, but it was, it was pretty minimal. So that kind of started, um, I was having a really hard time closing new clients uh, because of the time difference. I was in Southeast Asia and all my clients are in the U.S. So I wasn't closing new business. And my account manager, who was actually doing really, really well at the time that I left, uh, started slipping because I wasn't really providing her the guidance. And the way that I was rationalizing to myself was I, you know, I wanted to have uh, her be, you know, I wanted this to be like anti-fragile. I wanted her to learn from these mistakes and get to the point where she could handle things without me. Um, and I was also trying not to be a micromanager, but the reality was I should have been a lot more proactive on that. So fast forward a couple of months to let's call it. Yeah. Like, I mean, basically it was, it was you know, February, March of, of this year. So I haven't signed any new clients since, uh, I mean, I think I signed the last client in the airport in Taipei on the day that I was flying into, uh, to, to Bangkok. Uh, and then I hadn't really been adding more business. Well, which was, I thought that was, you know, Hey, this is life now. <laughs> this is, this is how, it's how I do things. But, uh, in reality, no, it was, uh, you know, I was kind of just coasting off the fumes from efforts I had done before. Uh, but basically I, uh, I hadn't been signing new clients and I'd been seeing some attrition of other clients. So I ended up, um, I had a client who was, uh, to be frank, uh, you probably described this guy as an energy vampire. So I was happy to let him go, but that was contingent on the rest of my client base standing pretty still. So I had two unexpected client losses that happened in March, which took me below that 5k level. So I was, uh, at that point really like I was, I was facing some, some challenges. I mean, it was just, you know, I, I kind of took a hard look. I was like, well, damn, like, you know, I, I'm going to have to be living off of credit cards at this point. Like 
it's not, you know, I had, you know, it's, it's, it's barely covering my expenses for, for living and running the business. So it's no longer an option for me not to make this money. Like, so I started, uh, and then, well, this is when the inspiration came in. So I ended up, uh, figuring out which to date has been the most successful lead generation strategy I've had for my own business. Um, I've been generating dozens of appointments when it would uh, usually take me months to, to go through that. And I'm, I'm, and some days I'm wow. going through, yeah. So I'm going through in some days more, uh, more sales calls than I, I've had in, you know, weeks or even months prior. So that, that uh, you know, that, that was, that, that kind of came out of that, that, that what would it take visualization actually uh, come to mention it. But um, at this point, I, you know, I, I am hustling, but, the question is, uh, you know, what's stopping me from, if, if I can get the success, what's, what's stopping this from being a sprint that I just post off for another six or 12 months? Because mm-hmm. if the business is 100% in a place where I can do that, I just don't want to let it happen again. Right. That, that makes total sense because it's, it's frustrating. You, you had the business running smoothly and then you yeah. were going to, you, maybe you could have broken through this upper level on your thermostat. And then all that stuff got created by your subconscious. <laughs> right. So, well, are you ready to move your thermostats? So ready. Yeah. And you've got some water handy. So when we shift to this energy, you can stay hydrated. Oh. Yes, sir. All right. Excellent. So let's just make sure we're connected to the light. So, just take your energy up a few thousand miles to connect to the truth, light, and love of your higher self and bring that down through the top of your head, through your throat, through your shoulders, chest, stomach, abdomen, hips, legs, feet, and go down, down, down to the center of the earth and connect to the energy of Mother Earth unconditional love and acceptance and freedom and support and bring that up through your feet, your legs, your hips, your abdomen, stomach, chest, throat, head, and top of your head. So now you have light coming from above and below. And now expand the light at your heart out as big as the room you're in, as big as the building, as big as the city, as big as the country, as big as the planet, as big as the solar system, as big as the galaxy and as big as the universe. So that's the TLC process. And if people watching don't know how to do that, there's a video on our website, uh, intuitiveleadership.com slash TLC. Okay, so what would it take for your minimum to go from 5K to 6K a month? Well, I'm trying to think. I have, I have some things. I mean, it, it's, it's, that number is kind of determined by necessity at this point, um, or at mm-hmm. least I'm perceiving it as that. So what it would take to, to bring in that, I guess the, the most obvious answer would be to put myself in a position where I couldn't make less than six k. Mm. So if you signed up from a, a loan shark in the mafia and they would come around and shoot your kneecaps, if you didn't make six K, you'd be really motivated, but maybe that's not the best approach. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> What would it take to have a higher minimum? Um, minimum set of needs. Well, I guess another thing too is, is uh, I guess having something that I could, I could profitably put it into. Because sometimes I feel like if I have uh, this extra income, it's just not really being employed like effectively. Mm. I have kind of a recurring theme where it's, you know, the, what it takes to level up. Um, I feel like I'm kind of caught in the, uh, in the mid range between something that's you know, fully autonomous and scalable. Like a goal I've had for a long time is to have uh, an SDR or like a, I mean, eventually getting a sales team. Um, but, you know, building that from the ground up 
is kind of it's it's uh, it seems kind of always out of reach. So it's it's getting I guess to, to move from five k to six k, it would be great to have something, um, I guess a, a little bit more incremental than uh, than anything that I see right now. Um. Two things that came to me when I when I asked that, what would it take to get from 5K to 6K? One is, have you come across the concept of paying yourself first? I have not. Where you, so that means before you start paying all the you know other expenses you have, you make a payment into yourself. You know, maybe to a savings account. Mm-hmm. So right off the top, you put a thousand dollars into a savings account, and that's not there to pay all the other expenses. Right. It's a technique people use when they're trying to save more and cut down on their expenses. You know, if you're used to spending a certain money, a personal amount of money yourself, right? And you, mm-hmm. you're trying to make the, the month stretch to, the, to the, the income. Yeah. If you've already paid yourself a certain, say 10% of your, your income into a savings account, then you, you do juggling to make everything else fit into the money available. But if you do it the other way around and you just hope that at the end of the month there'll be some spare money left over as opposed to some spare months left over for the money you have, you're never going to save. Yeah. So if in your business you said, hey, I'm going to put about away a certain amount of money for, for whatever purpose you're going to use it for, then that becomes a, a new ex, you know, quotes expense that you need to, to have. Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I've honestly never, I mean, I'm, I'm familiar with the term, but it's not something I've ever seriously considered um, just because it's, it's always, it's so easy to get in this pattern of, of fighting fires and, you know, get to the point where it's the end of the month. You're like, Oh damn, what, what bill can I push? So that's, that's probably yeah. more proactive. Yeah. So the other thing that uh, came to me is I know for myself, I'm not always a hundred percent clear about exactly what expenses I have. And sometimes like a tax bill comes due that I'd forgotten about or some other irregular expense or, or something has to be repaired and I hadn't allowed for that. So I, I'm just wondering if also when you say it's 5k, is it really 5k or is it 5.5k or is it some other number that, that is your minimum necessary amount? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. So if you count, uh, I have a goal this year to just completely eliminate um, any debts that I've picked up. And, you know, there's, there's a, quite a bit. And realistically, if I, if, I, if I want to get this handled by, you know, I would say by the end of the year, I should, I should probably be closer to 10. How and, much and, closer to 10? Uh, ideally, at 10. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's the other thing too. I, I've kind of, um, when I've been thinking about it, um, I think really it's, it's, if I could get, uh, you know, I could kind of, I could wipe everything off in a quarter easily if, uh, if I were, if I were at 20, um, that's kind of, which is, you know, going back to that old goal, which I've, I've had for myself, but not really believed in, but you know, maybe that's, this is the point at mm-hmm. which, you know, I have well, to, well, well, We'll get to bu- to bump up your maximum, but let's get the minimum up first, right? Because um, I think wait. that's going to give you a more comfortable ride. You know, yeah. it's like if you're driving your car and you let the gas go down to the minimum, right? Have you ever were you ever a student or you had a, your first car and you couldn't really afford the gas, but you drive until it got right down to the minimum, and then sometimes you'd run out of gas and it'd be really awkward. Yeah. Have you, I don't, or either you or your friends, maybe. I've never, I've never experience. actually run out of gas, but uh, I've gotten pretty darn close. Yeah, well, same thing with a business. If you run your business where you just let things get close to the edge before you hustle to find where the gas station is, it causes anxiety and stress. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot easier if you raise the minimum up and you have some funds saved away in case of unexpected excitements. Um, and you do energy work to remove unexpected excitements from your business life. You can always right. go to the movies to have excitements. You don't have to create excitement and drama in your business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, I guess so, so the question of what, what the actual minimum is, it's like if I wanted to, uh, if, if I wanted to, I, I mean, I had a tax bill come in. Uh, I mean, it's actually April 18th. It's when it's due in the U.S. right now. 
Uh, I ended up filing for a six month extension and my bills around 10,000. So mm -hmm. realistically, that's, that's a, another, what, one and a half K per month, if that's going to end up getting played out. So uh, yep. that kind of boosts that another 1.5. Um, and I have some credit card uh, debt as well that I could probably need to get out of. That's, you know, it's probably another 25 right there. So if I need to, uh, mm -hmm. if that's all going to get settled um, in the next, let's say six months, so it's what, 35. So that would be, uh, you know, just a, about another, about another 6K is what I would need. So I guess the, the, the actual minimum to, to hit that was is closer to 11K. Okay. Do you feel comfortable make, making a commitment that you're going to stash away tax estimated tax money into a savings account and you're going to make those debt payments every month? Well, this is the other thing. That's not even estimated. That's, that's you know, for 2016. Oh, um, that's if I'm, definite. Yeah. So I, if, if I'm going to actually be taking that into consideration, it's got to be even more. Um, oh. And yeah, so uh, I mean, that's, that's also that. I'm not even considering the tax I would have to pay on the amount that I'm making. So, I mean, and it's, it's honestly, I, I know it's, I know it's, um, it's super wrong, but as a marketing guy, I'm always focused on the top line and it's, it's so easy to not actually, you know, have that really scary uh, spreadsheet calculation that you do with yourself. And, you know, I, you know, most of the time rather just jump on another sales call. Um, but it's, it's something that I do have to really look into. So what would it take for you to have a clear spreadsheet of your expenses? Um, you know, if I got that on my to-do list, I could probably have that done by this time tomorrow. Do you, you, do you want to get it done by first thing tomorrow? I would say by end of day tomorrow, but um, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's scary, but I really should. I mean, it's not, it's not going anywhere if I don't do it. Um, so I've heard you use the word scary twice in reference to a spreadsheet. It's just a set of numbers and data. I've yeah. never heard of someone being bitten on the ankle by a spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess where the fear comes from is it's, it's, I'm trying to think it's, it's, I guess it's uh, basing what, uh, what I've been avoided. It's, it's, it's avoid, it's avoiding a, a financial reality that, um, you know, I've been able to, to look past, but is, you know, not going to go away if I, if I don't look at it. So I guess it's, it's, it's fear of what's actually, what, what actually is the case. Okay. So let's clear that fear of financial reality from your life permanently. Are you up for doing that? Yes. So when you think about this scary spreadsheet and the, the financial reality and all the terrible things that might be in there. What do you notice in your body? Um, I feel a bit of a, I would say like a, a tightness around my chest, like probably, yeah, I'd say like a tightness around my, my heart. It kind of feels like I'm contracting a little bit. Um, that's, that's the predominant thing that I feel when, when, I, when I think about facing that. And what emotions do you notice? it's kind of just like a, like a, like a vague, and it's sort of like the same feeling of um, like standing near a, like standing near a cliff, you know, it's kind of an unease slash anxiety, but like more of an unease than an anxiety. So you might fall off, but you haven't fallen off yet. It's just you know, yeah. a, a kind of a, a lower grade anxiety. Yeah. Well, it's like kind of the anxiety when you know that there's no way that you would fall off unless you deliberately wanted to but that still doesn't eliminate the, the chance in your mind. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a question in a moment, and I just want you to come back with the first number that comes to your mind, just straight from your intuition that you yeah. don't need to think about it. You don't have to have an accurate memory of whatever the thing is. You don't have to know the number at all. You just, what's the first thing that comes into your mind from your intuition? Are you okay doing that? Yeah. What's so this f feeling of chest tight, heart contracted, feeling like you're at the edge of the cliff, kind of a, an anxiety that's going on. What's the youngest age you felt the same way? I'm going to say, I'm going to say six. Okay. Who was that with? 
uh, <laughs> this is really funny. I was, uh, I think it was, it was like, um, it was in school. I had a, my teacher was out. I'm, I'm thinking of this really specific time. It was like, uh, I had this, this teacher, my teacher is out. There was somebody who was substituting. It was this teacher I thought was super mean. And I forgot what I did, but it was, definitely wasn't good. And she was, uh, she was telling me I was going to be in trouble and I was just throwing a fit, being a, being a punk. Okay. So let's just make sure you're still connected to light right now. Just take your consciousness up, take it down, bring it up, expand your heart out as big as the universe. And now I want you to see your teal seeing the six year old version of yourself who was having this experience with the mean substitute teacher and was going to get into trouble okay. and send light and love to him to clear this pattern that you've been recreating ever since you've had that. Cause I'm assuming this feeling of low level anxiety, heart contraction stuff is not unusual for you. Um, I mean, the thing is I avoid it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right, but it keeps turning yeah. up. It, the pattern keeps turning up in your life. Yeah. Yeah. So let's clear this out once okay. and for all so you don't keep reattracting it. I have a question. So keep sending. You. Can, this... you hold the, can you hold the question until after we've cleared oh, it? And then really? we'll answer the question. Is that okay? It was about the clearing, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is this version of myself inside of me or outside of me? doesn't matter. I mean, I think it's easier to deal with them outside. Okay. Whatever works for you. All right. You're sending light back in time from above and below to the six year old version of yourself. I mean, you could imagine a timeline that passes through you and in front of you, there's all the younger versions and behind you is all the older versions. But however, whatever works for you, Okay. So, and let's send TLC light to all the intermediate ages where you recreated the same pattern. Okay. All right. Okay. And let's also send light to the mother side of your family. So everywhere your mother had the same pattern in her life. And all her ancestors. How many levels of ancestors on her side had this pattern? What's the first number that comes to your head? I'll say four. Okay, so let's clear all of those. See light going into them, clearing their pattern. And let's clear everything on your father's side, wherever he had this. How many ancestors on his side had this same pattern? I was thinking six. Okay, let's send light to all those six folks. Whether they're alive or dead, their spirits still had this pattern and they've been passing it down the generations until it got, got to you. But now you've got conscious and you've got the opportunity to keel it. Okay. Okay. And then any past lives, how many past lives did you have this pattern in? Three to four. Three to four. Let's send love and light to all of those. And let's send love and light to any versions of yourself in any dimensions, past life ancestors, where you were on the opposite side of this pattern and you were the mean person invoking anxiety in someone else. Okay. Okay. So now contemplate by the end of tomorrow that you have a, a clear spreadsheet of your expenses. So what do you feel about that now? It feels better. I mean, I definitely feel like um, that, that sort of tightness has been removed and it was, 
it's getting it's every subsequent TLC we've done has, has made it a little a little easier. Cool. So if you think about the original pattern you had, and let's imagine that was at a hundred percent strength, how mm. much of it is left now? What percent number comes to your mind? Two. Two percent. What would it take to make it one percent? I guess just yeah. I, you know, I'd, I'd probably like to meditate on this. I, I mean, I'm sort of breathing in, and it's feeling better now. But uh, mm -hmm. I could probably do that on on my own time. Okay, and I, the message I got was drink some water. So. <laughs> I actually was thinking that too, but I you were. I okay. meant to though. <laughs> well, go. I'll pause the recording. You can go okay. fill up. All right, great to do that. So I'm glad you got some water. It's funny how we both had that thought at the same time. I'm sure it was a little intuitive nudge. And yeah. whenever you're clearing energy, it's good to have plenty of water. It's a 